Hi there, welcome to No Nonsense Whiskey. My name's Vin PF, and on today's episode, after a couple of weeks break due to a little bit of illness, I am checking out something rather interesting that is not a whiskey. Very important to understand that. Now, these guys here are a new-ish distillery on the block. You know, they've been around for a couple of years, but obviously they don't have any official whiskey to sell just yet. They've just got a kind of suite of interesting grain spirits. Now, these guys are an English distillery. They're fairly new. They're based around Bristol sort of area. And what they're trying to do while they release their whiskey is just produce some really interesting things. What we've got on the table here today, as you might have seen on the title below, is uh, what they're calling the circumstantial. So they, that's most of their releases come under the name circumstantial. And this one is just plainly called rice. That's all the information we get on the label. So you would see originally circumstantial rice. And then here underneath, we have a rather interesting batch code. We'll get into that in just a moment. Now, a couple of details you'll need to know about um, the bottle itself. It's around £36 before delivery, and it's 44.5%. Uh, the, all the information you need to know is on these batch codes. You have to go on their website. Uh, I guess once you have a couple of these in your stock, then you'll start to understand what each of these codes means. But um, the cool thing is on the website, it's got complete parity about what they're doing, how they've made this thing, and how they've made all of their other stuff. Now, I actually got this little set from them as well. Um, this came from the distillery themselves, so thank you very much for sending that over. Uh, I also got this wee set here, um, which don't have names on them, but I'll go through these on a sample Saturday another day. Um, I think in here we've got like a barley and we've got a wheat and we might have a rye as well. I'm not, I'm not sure, uh, to, to be 100% sure, but I've got all the information and we'll go through that on the sample Saturday in a couple of weeks' time. I wanted to cover this one first before I covered the samples because Although, uh, when I first received the bottle, I sort of look at it and you think, well, okay, this is made from rice, um, and it's not whiskey, uh, you know, it, this thing hasn't even been aged in a cask, and you sort of like, you know, thinking, well, okay, this is, uh, maybe, is this a step too far of the weirdness scale? But then I tried it, and as you can see, you know, I mean, I've had this probably about a week or so now, and I just, I can't leave it alone. Um, it, it's really rather tasty, so uh, we'll, but we'll get into the tasting notes after we've talked a little bit more about the uh, batch codes. So this one here is a, uh, a 181821. Now, um, each of these is listed on their website quite neatly. The first number is just simply the batch number. So uh, the next rice that they do will have a two. Uh, even if they make exactly the same stuff for the rest of the label, it will be unique. Every single batch is unique. Uh, and I should say as well, this one is 74 of 127. Um, obviously, you can't call this sort of thing single cask. No cask involved this time. Uh, the eight on here, uh, it, it, so it goes batch number, and then we're talking about the uh, mash bill, let's say, or the fermentation port, uh, period of time. Then we're talking about the distillation. Then we're talking about the aging and for how long, essentially, on here. So the next number here is eight, and that one is uh, giving us the mash bill for the rice. This is 70% crushed rice 30 percent malted barley so you know it has got that kind of early whiskey element going on there as well it's been fermented for 12 days and this is the weird thing as well so they're, they're not just using distillers yeast they're also using a uh, kind of ale and mead yeasts as well all in there as well i, I guess it's just to, to test the waters and see how it went but you know interesting nonetheless next we have the the one on here uh, they've actually got um three different ways of distilling right now uh, and I'll, I'll probably bring up an image of their setup it's not a traditional pot still at all they've got a stainless steel pot still with a kind of copper head on it and then that can transfer over into a four plate column still or a 12 plate column still so they can either do just straight up distillation with the uh, the stainless steel and the copper um, or they can do the, the distillation followed by the small column or distillation followed by the large column or distillation followed by one and then the other, I guess. But they've only really done the, th the three different ones so far and they've got room for more. You know, they, they leave room for all kinds of other stuff on their website. Then we've got the eight, the second eight. And here's something that's really interesting. As I mentioned earlier, not actually aged in oak casks or casks of any kind. This has been aged in a uh, kind of a plastic container, let's say. It's a HDPE, high-density polyethylene, that's been left open to the air and has had um, British oak 
charred spindles. Again, I'll throw up an image for that so you can see what I mean. Uh, and these have been specially made for the distillery and they just um, you know chuck those in and um, let it mingle. This one here has been sort of aged you know uh, in, in its own way, let's say, for 21 months. That's what the 21 means on the back end of it. So yeah, like I say, um, not a whiskey, even if it was aged in casks, it can't be called a whiskey yet because it's not old enough. But um, yeah, some loads of weird stuff going on there, loads of weird stuff. But as you'll see from this, if you give them a go, um, very interesting spirit and not too dissimilar to what we're after, but just something a little bit weird about it. Let's get into the actual whiskey and see what we've got now. We're um, we're going to make an assumption about natural colour and all things. Like that. I don't think they're messing around with things like that, but I don't know any information about that sort of thing. Let's get onto the nose and see what we've got in the glass. Now it's it's got quite a a space ID nose on it for me right from the off. It's very light, very floral. Lots of vanillas, lots of orchard fruits, those apples and pears kind of vibe to it. Some honey, a touch of charred wood in there as well. Nothing too out of the ordinary, let's say. So it's a quite a familiar nose, but um, light, let's say. You know, we're not talking about something peaty or kind of heavily sherry or anything like that. We're not talking about the kind of heavier elements to it at all. Let's try on the palette. Mm -hmm. Now you get a kind of initial sweetness, more of those vanillas and those honeys coming through. Then a uh, a bit of kind of, dare I say, a light toffee note coming through. And then some spiciness, and then it kind of finishes on this almost um, like a like a like a sugared sweet, like a little um, like a boiled sweet kind of finish on it. Finishes fairly medium in length. You know, it's not overly long or overly short. Nicely spicy lead, quite flavoursome as well. Um, more of those kind of honey notes that stay around, and it ends in a kind of like a, almost like a soury note on the back end. Now here's the cool thing about this: um, all of those notes there are are fairly typical of, um, of of whiskey, I guess. I mean, you don't often get that kind of boiled sweet vibe to it, which is really nice. Um, so this gives it that kind of extra inflection to it. But if you had this in a blind tasting, my feeling is that. It, like you would get to it and it would instantly, you'd be like, there's something about this, but you are you would never, I think, instantly assume that it wasn't a whiskey. That's the cool thing about it. So it fits in well within that kind of like light, floral, space ID elements that we're all used to and that we know and love, but it's got that extra tiny, weird little inflection to it that makes it just a little bit more interesting than those standard fares. And it's something that's made me come back to it time and time again. And I don't think this is going to last long in my house because I'm just going to keep going back to it. And I think it might change as it goes down. I'm not sure. Um, you know, I've had this, like I said, for about a couple of weeks and it's been fairly consistent since. So I don't expect this is going to change much, but really, really impressed with it. If you can't already tell, really impressed with it. It's um, very interesting. Very much looking forward to the other stuff that they've sent across to me as well to try to see what else they're doing because this is my favourite thing about English whiskey right now um, and I know obviously I'm an English guy uh, I'm enthusing about English whiskey if this was bad I would tell you 100% I would tell you because um, people uh, need to be making good stuff you know if you're a small distillery you need to be making good stuff to stand out and these guys are really making good stuff um, their first initial whiskey is going to come out next year 2022 in September I think so I'll be interested to see what they do there. And I'm going to try their barley in this um, sample Saturday tasting, which will give us an idea about where their whiskey is going. But hopefully, Circumstance Distillery is on your radar now. I think it should be, because what they're doing is really interesting. Um, as I mentioned earlier, probably didn't finish my story, but English whiskey, don't, they're not tied to the same rules as like the uh, Scotch um, Whiskey Association puts on Scotch, for instance. You know, So yeah, we can age things in in uh, in you know hdpe plastic just like a like a water bottle you know um you know i'm not saying that's what it is it'd be big obviously a big bulk container but that's what your water comes in you know quite happy to buy a water at the shop a bottle of water and and think that's not tainting that at all this this plastic doesn't do anything to the liquid whatsoever just those spindles very 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 interesting get them on your radar if you can, pick up a bottle of it. It's 36 quid for this, and they, they have different prices depending on what you're looking for. So it's not, not really a lot of money either, to be fair. You know, a lot of new distilleries are charging 50 quid plus for their underage whiskies and, and, and whatnot. So 
yeah, can't enthuse about these guys enough. They're making excellent stuff. They're pricing it well. They're making really interesting things. They've got complete parity. It's all on the website. Uh, any questions that I had, I fired across to the distillery and they answered them straight away. So anything that I wasn't sure about, like I didn't have a clue what this kind of aged and spindle thing meant. And they just replied to me saying, this is exactly what we're doing. Superb stuff. Get them on your radar. And I'll catch you again on more No Nonsense Whiskey videos when I cover some more Circumstance Distillery.